salvaging wood, potting soil, and fish bait from a rotten wood pile. William Hovey Smith, 2016. I am the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and we attempt to live a sustainable lifestyle and make what we need and gather what we need from the woods around us. And this is one case where we actually make potting soil with considerable energy savings compared to using conventional peat moss and other store-bought ingredients. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And I'm also the owner of a new company, Hovey's Knives of China. And we are now continuing to make charcoal by eliminating this old pile of cut up pecan from a tree that fell several years ago. Now I am a believer of salvaging what's useful and we're gonna do that. And among the things we're gonna salvage is something like peat moss. That is the very, very rotted wood that's coming out of these old pieces here. We are also going to salvage some fish bait from the numerous insects that inhabit this rotten wood back here. Yeah. So we have some tools, bag, jar, and this, which is the Crouching Dragon soil screener, and of course our garden way cart, as well as various shovels and rakes. So we're going to proceed to get started. For those who haven't seen the Crouching Dragon in action, uh, here it is. This has a coarser screen underneath for added strength, and then a finer screen on top. And the surface is inclined so that when you dribble stuff over the center, fine material falls through actually soil-like particles, and the coarser material goes to the bottom. Both of which we want to recover and have use of, and both of which will be sound. As well as having the beneficial use of giving this pile of rotten wood out of my yard. You can see these tufts of grass like where I'm here standing, like here and here. This was originally the outside of the wood pile and it was actually two stacks wide this way. I've already removed one stack entirely. So we are really working on getting this thing out of here. Our burning is off to a good one match start, although there is some wet material in there and you can hear it popping. Uh, there's enough dry material to sustain the burn, unlike uh, the other day when almost everything I had was wet, uh, yeah, it took that pile all day to actually burn down. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce these logs. <laughs> it doesn't take much. Uh, these things are fairly well rotted. Uh, some of them have a little sound wood in them. And the best of which I'll break apart and actually dry. But uh, uh, most of these are pretty well gone. Yeah. Ain't much there, guys. For those of you who are wondering where the fish bait come in, well, here they are. Yep. These larvae right here. And put a little dry wood and sand and soil in there for them. So they'll keep up. Yeah. Oh, a good beetle. Yeah, need to go in there.
what I have done at this stage is taken the pile and reduced the wood on this half that is most convenient to my crouching dragon soil screen. And on the back you'll see a pile of wood that is more sound than the other. That I'm going to allow to dry. Some of that will be suitable for burning in my cooker and we'll make charcoal out of it and I'll get a much larger return than this heat pile I'm doing now. I don't expect to get much out of this waste material I'm burning. Now that we've taken the coarse metal rake and removed most of the woody material, you can better judge maybe how the action works here in separating the fine from the remaining woody particles and occasional fish bait. Like said beetle. This load of material is interesting stuff in its own right. Oh, well, there is a little soil in it. With enough combustible material, I'm beginning to wonder. I took a better selection of this, how the forge would do fired with just it alone. I do a secondary screening. drying. Just out of curiosity, I think I'll screen some of this a second time and sort of size sort it and see how it does in the forge. It may be hard to see well in this dapple light, but this is now a very loose, friable material. Very organic rich, of course. There is a little mineral soil in here, but this is as good as any peat moss. And it's even better because it does have a little more grain to it and a little more structure. And the few wood fragments in it, uh, no, they don't do any harm. So, yeah, this is good stuff, adding to a potting mix. Uh, I'm going to put about 50% of this in a pot, plus 50% uh, of my um, dead people dirt. And that's what I'm going to grow some tomatoes in. That the dead people dirt has about 30% calcium carbonate in it. And this is acid, so the result will be pretty good. Yeah, good stuff, guys. We're here at another phase of our charcoal making, and we're out here with our garden work table. And we're about to plant six tomato plants. It's Memorial Day, so it's sort of late to be doing that. And I have on the table here some dead people dirt salvaged from the cemetery plot. And I have a video on how and why I gathered that. And beneath, there is a five-gallon pail full of fresh woods earth that I recovered from the pile I'm reducing over under the oak tree. Now this earth right here is crawling with millipedes. Uh, so I'll hunt to say the least. But we're going to see if we can maybe sieve a few of these things out of here. Because we're going to sterilize this soil. No. Too damp to sieve. Sorry guys. Where are you going to get crispy? Yeah. Because I do want to I'm using a trowel now to get a little more uniform mix. And the heck grill is now at 400 degrees, so yeah, I'll take up soil long to reach a sterilizing temperature. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now the rest of this is just going to get sacked up and scattered out here on the lawn further down there 
where I have some bare places right in the grass, and this will help the grass get reestablished. You can see the results now. This pan is hot indeed. You can see steam rising from it as I rotate it. So it has certainly reached 212 degrees all through it. And yeah, any critters have been killed. And any seed have probably been killed. Although seed are pretty tough stuffs. Not necessarily every one has. But it hasn't been taken to the point where the wood fragments are starting to carbonize yet. You don't want to get it quite that hot. So this is just about ideal. And I had to use leather gauntlets to take it off without burning myself. And so now we're just going to put this down on the ground and let it continue to cool so we can put it in pots and put the next pan on the grill. Here we go. Nice deer ribs. Our potting soil has been moved over to the work table and our ribs are ready to flip. Yes. There we go. A little charred, that's okay. There we go. Good flip. Now, now I have a, another pan of potting soil ready to go on as soon as these come off. We are now ready to take up the ribs and put another load of potting soil on to cook and add a little more fuel to the fire. This is a table that I bought recently at an auction and it had been sitting outdoors for I don't know how many years. But it's very useful as a mixing table for a gardener. It has this quarter inch slick plastic top and although it's warped it is outstanding for mixing small amounts of soil like I'm doing for these pots also for putting things on and separating uh, elements and general potting where you waste level I don't do a lot of this and don't want to but it is nice to have something available and appropriate on the few occasions that I do So this soil will stay loose, even though it is damp. All right, turning around the pot, getting there. It dampens pretty good, by the way, which is a good sign that you've got a good friable soil. It doesn't have a lot of clay in it, which you do not want. In the potting mix in particular. A little is okay, but you certainly don't want a lot. Okay. It's looking reasonable. A knife here. Run around the plastic cell a little bit. Just keep it right at the edge. This will make sure that it comes out clean. It up. And there you have it. Okay. Make a hole Down here in the pot. Push it a little bit. It breaks and loops, loosens some of the roots a little bit. But now, this is Hobie Smith. Reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe. Goodbye, God bless, and see you next time.
Most of my outdoor books are very basic how-to kinds of publications like backyard deer hunting, crossbow hunting, and practical bow fishing, but with extreme muzzleloading, I get in more details about muzzleloading and muzzleloading hunting. Now, all of these contain recipes and very practical ways to hunt and fish inexpensively in the outdoors. I'm also the author of a new series of books under the Profit brand. These are all business books, and the first of these is Ideas for New Businesses, How to Found Your Own Million or Billion Dollar Business. And here's a little blurb about me and about the book. And Hobie's Knives of China is one of these businesses that I've started from my own inspiration. And you can do much the same. I burn some of the smaller dry pieces in my charcoal grill to make charcoal, but the bigger logs I'm going to pile up in a rick and burn outside. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 500 videos, and Hovey's Nice of China, you can go to my website, www.hoveysmith.com. I'm going to be at the Cobb Galleria at table 16U. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.